The man, the myth, the legend, Azim Kafasi. Brendan Harrison, business. Matthew Threadgold, biology. This curve shows the average binding energy per nucleon as a functional number of nucleons in a nucleus. Notice how the energy of binding energy are in million electron volts, which is the standard energy in the nuclear physics. This curve indicates how stable atomic nuclei are. The higher the curve, the more stable the nucleus. Notice the characteristic shape and the peak near a iron. These are the most stable in the universe. From the curve of binding energy, the less stable nuclei are further to the right, which is much further away from iron. This suggests that energy can be released when heavier nuclei split up into fragments nearer to iron. This is the process of nuclear fusion. Oh, hello! Nuclear fission is a, nu is a nuclear reaction or a radioactive decay process in which the nucleus of an atom splits into small parts. This process often produces free neutrons and photons in the form of gamma rays, thus releasing a large amount of energy. In order for fission to produce energy, the total binding energy of the resulting element must be less negative than that of the starting element. Most fission is binary fission, which produces two charged fragments. So, this is our typical fission reaction. Here, a uranium-235 nucleus is hit by a neutron. An extra neutron is added, and it converts into a cesium and rubidium plus three more neutrons. These, more, these three more neutrons are then put into a chain reaction and strike more uranium nuclei. So, we can work out how much energy is released from this reaction by looking at the mass defects. This turns out to be 0.20509 atomic mass units. This is just the mass of reactants minus the mass of the products. So, the mass difference is converted to an energy equivalent by E equals mc squared and our one atomic mass unit equals 931.5 million electron volts for one atomic mass unit. This equals 0.20509, 20509 atomic mass unit times 931.5. This equals 186.8 million electron volts, which is the energy released in a reaction. Yes, Brendan? How did you get 931.5? Right, 931.5 comes from the amount of energy in one atomic mass unit of mass. Okay, so that's one atomic mass unit, which is 1.66 times 10 to the minus 7, times the speed of light squared. Yeah? Thank you. Let's see, let's calculate the binding energy of a copper atom. So, a copper consists of 29 protons and 34 neutrons. So, we can work out the mass of a proton, which is this, and the mass of a neutron, which is this. What is U? U represents the atomic mass unit, which represents one proton and one neutron. Yeah. So our total mass is 16.50556 times 1 atomic mass unit, but the mass of one copper nucleus is actually 62.91367U. So we've realised we've got some difference in between our masses, so that's our uh, delta M, which is 0.59189U, and where U is 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27. So our binding energy is given by delta MC squared, so we just put those numbers in and we get mass times the one atomic mass unit, times the speed of light square, which gives us 8.84 times 10 to the minus 11 joules. Yeah? Thank you. Hello, and welcome to today's news with Matthew Threadgold and Brendan Harrison. Today, as incapacity was struck by a neutron. Sadly, the 17-year-old did not survive nuclear fission. Obviously, the lesson to be learnt from today is to make sure you have enough binding energy. That's all from us. Good night.
This curve shows the average binding energy per nucleon as a function of number of nucleons in the nucleus. So are you filming it? Yeah. I'm not going to lose this. That's fine. Duh! No, you might be sat over there. Oh, I'm going to sit over there. No, I'm not joking. You can sit there if you want. No, what? Oh no no! It just got in that one! Now we're gonna sit like one. So was in? Our typical fishing reaction. So was in. Let's calculate the binding energy of a copper atom. So a copper atom consists of 29 protons and 34 neutrons.